about bell ringing in Petrov. During the Thirty Years' War, the Swedish commander was the famous and feared Lennart Torstensson, against whom apparently no fortress could resist. It was with this reputation that in the spring of 1645, he arrived in front of the Moravian city of Brno. Torstensson was certain that within a week, everything would be over and that he would be able to attribute to himself yet another great victory. His troops quickly occupied the suburbs and then attempted to break through the city walls. The citizens of Brno fought back valiantly, though. Amongst the Swedes, there were a growing number of wounded and dead, and they had already had enough of this long war. Their grumbling became louder and louder because the week first turned into a month, and then the month turned into a quarter of a year. Brno continued to resist, however, and Torsten Sorn's debilitated army was diminished by a third. The defenders also suffered, though. They were short of food, and they also had a large number of wounded and dead. The city walls were also badly damaged by the Swedish gunfire, and although they fought bravely, they felt that they would not last long. Both sides were therefore eager for a quick resolution, and so Torstensson summoned his commanders to a pub located in the suburbs to discuss with them what they should do. While he was proposing a toast, a cannonball fired by the defenders came flying through the window and smashed the cup that he held in his hand. The warlord maintained his cool demeanor, though. He sent for a smaller glass so that the Brno gunners would have a smaller target. At the same time, however, he took the broken cup as an omen and ordered the preparation of an assault for the next day. If the city did not fall by noon, he would order a withdrawal back to Sweden. The innkeeper, who was serving at the table, had learned a little Swedish during those three months. He waited for night to come and then hurried through the underground tunnels to the city, where he passed on this important message to the defenders of Brno. The next day, a ruthless Swedish attack was initiated. This time, it looked very bad for the defenders of Brno. The attackers had bet everything on one card and they moved forward with extraordinary determination. In several places, they had already quickly climbed over the walls, and it seemed clear that in a short time, the city would be in their hands. Just at the most difficult moment, however, a loud, majestic sound rang out over the entire city. The bell of the St. Peter and Paul Cathedral had just struck noon. The Swedes wavered, while on the other hand, fresh strength poured into the veins of the defenders and suddenly they were able to resist their formidable opponents even in the course of what became its final onslaught. They charged forward against the attackers and drove them out from the streets of Brno and outside the city walls. Torstensson realized that he had lost. He angrily threw his cup of wine into a corner and gave orders for his soldiers' withdrawal from Brno. In the evening, when residents finally felt able to relax and take a deep breath, they learned that it was a deceit that had saved their lives. At the most difficult moment, the defenders sent one of their number to the sexton in Petrov with a desperate plea. He fulfilled it without any hesitation. He went to the belfry and rang the bell to announce noon. But at that time, there was still a whole hour until noon. Just a few moments later, and the city would have fallen. And so it was that the long battle was ultimately decided by several strokes of a bell. Since that time, the bell in Petrov has always announced noon at 11 o'clock thereby recalling the event that saved the city from the Swedish commander Torstensson and also how important it is in life to believe in yourself at the right moment. <laughs>